What is up, guys? It is Stab. Welcome to week four of the Stab League. Your Sacred Fire currently sit atop the league at 3 0, plus 14. Very solid record, very solid uh, um, differential, and uh, in a very good position for the playoffs, of course. But today, we face our first of our two toughest tests this season, and that is Balfrey. Now, Balfrey is somebody before the league. I didn't know him that well, but as I've been talking to him, uh, he's actually a former roommate of my friend Jim's. So uh, he is a very good battler. Uh, Jim warned us that he was a very good battler, and he's um, shown to be very, very skilled in both of his first, well, actually all three of his matches um, before uh, today's game, um, he's actually coming in at 1-2. and two. He 6 0 camp in Week 1. Uh, very impressive playing with his Snorlax. But uh, he fell on hard times against Jimmy. lost 1-0. And then he lost 1-0 again to Sam in what can be considered a very solid upset by Sam. She played very well. Balfrey made some mistakes. But if Balfrey plays mistake-free, he's a very good battler, guys. Don't underestimate him, as I certainly am not. Uh, if we look at his team, it's a bunch of UU threats, but it's very threatening nonetheless it's a very powerful team he knows how to use the mons he has and should be a very good game uh that being said balfrey's team consists of snorlax arcanine togekiss mamoswine heracross slowbro Ma regular gardevoir uh vaporeon umbreon magneton and mega septile so looking at this game looking going into this game against balfrey um one thing that i noticed was his team is very very slow if you look at his team uh, Mega Septile, we know, is very fast. Reaches 425 with the Timid Nature. Um, but after that, it drops down to Arcanine at 317 and then Heracross at 295. So that is something I definitely uh, took into account when building this team, as well as the fact that he doesn't have a lot of, like, pure offensive threats. He has a couple. Uh, Mega Septile can be threatening. Gardevoir can be threatening. And then Heracross. But really, based on what he has on his team and how Balfrey uses some of his Pokemon... His team is not very threatening offensively. It's about breaking his bulk and then forcing him into a situation where his strategies won't work. So I think I've built a pretty decent team to go against him this week. And um, you guys should like it a lot. Let me go ahead and get into that in just a second. All right, guys, this is the team. And as you see, coming back for another week is Ronda Rousey, uh, the Mega Low Pony. Uh, you see there with Limber, as usual. Now, we have a pretty standard set, and Low Pony puts in a lot of work against Balfrey's team. As you see, we have Fake Out, uh, Returner, Ice Punch. Pretty standard uh, Ice Punch for the Sceptile. Return hits everything else pretty hard. Now we have Low Kick. And there was a debate about Low Kick and High Jump Kick as I was going over Balfrey's team. See, Low Kick does not knock out the Umbreon. Um, it only does about 60%, but we have other ways to deal with Umbreon. The cool thing about low kick is this dies unless we get a, it does 99% minimum. So we just low kick a pretty bulky Snorlax and we kill it. Uh, Mamoswine gets knocked out by low kick and then even Magneton, which isn't that bulky at all, takes a ton, like 70 to 80% or something like that from a adamant low kick. That's the other thing that's cool about low punny is it's very fast and we can run adamant pretty safely this week because... Again, the fastest thing on Ball Prey's team, other than the Sceptile, is the Arcanine. And all we need is 48 in speed to uh, reach 318 and outspeed the 317 of Arcanine. Uh, pretty weird spread on Low Pony this week. And the reason for that, again, is because um, Arcanine is the fastest thing we have to worry about outspeeding. Uh, we have maximum attack just to hit as hard as possible. 104 HP for some overall bulk. And then 60 in defense and 44 in spadef just to even out and maximize the most... Uh, defensive bulk we, that we can have possible um so yeah that was the first thing i know i needed uh, another cool thing about balfrey's team as if you look on here balfrey's team is a mostly grounded and b his only way of removing hazards is defog and togekiss that we cannot then we can exploit pretty easily this is why i'm bringing my greninja uh ninja please is returning uh we got a life orb set again this week and we're bringing the move scald grass knot ice beam and toxic spikes now scald grass knot ice beam hit a lot of his team pretty good um or well, I should say. Storlax does appreciate getting Skull Burn. Uh, we can pretty much 2 kill any form of Arcanine for uh, free, basically, against uh, Scald. Um, Ice Beam for the Togekiss. Mamoswine doesn't appreciate Scald. Or Grass Knot. See, Grass Knot actually one-shots this. Uh, Heracross, unless its Guts, will not appreciate a potential burn. Um, Slowbro doesn't like getting burned. Plus, we get Oko with Grass Knot, even if it's like max HP and a lot of bulk. 
It's got to be fully, it's got to be almost fully specially defensive to live, actually, so that's fine. Uh, Gardevoir won't appreciate getting burned. Um, we do have to be careful about Gardevoir in case he wants to go for, like, a moon blast and uh, do a lot of damage and probably t potentially kill us. Ground Grass Knot doesn't do a lot to pay poor in, but that's what the final move is for. Uh, like I said, Umbra doesn't die to low kick, but we can easily uh, wear that down with other mods on our team. And then Magneton does not appreciate a skull. And the coolest thing about this is that if Balfrey doesn't know that speed on Megas takes over the second turn and tries to Mega Evolve up with the Sceptile on our Greninja, we can outspeed it the first turn and knock it out with Ice Beam, which is pretty cool and a pretty uh, safe way to get rid of uh, the Mega Sceptile, which is a huge threat to our team, turn one. So kind of already mentioned it but basically for the spread here this little extra 16 evs in uh hp to like put a little bit more bulk and greninja than usual um maximum special attack to hit as hard as possible and then a uh 240 with a timid nature it allows a down speed timid septile with a, a at 372 with a 374 speed so ninja is another one and then like i said we have toxic spikes and i don't know if we actually said we have toxic spikes but yeah toxic spikes is nice because it Wears down a lot of his bulk. It can toxic the Arcanine. Uh, the other thing about it is we can get two layers pretty easily. We only need one, technically, but we can get two pretty easily. Um, Snorlax won't appreciate being worn down by Toxic. Uh, Togekiss can default, but like I said, uh, we have ways to pressure that, even with just Ice Beam on our own Greninja. Um, Mamoswide does appreciate getting Toxic. Uh, Heracross, like I said, if it's Guts, it could be a problem. Uh, Slowbro... Will get worn down by Toxic and be forced to slack off, which again makes a switch for us. Gardevoir won't appreciate taking um, multiple uh, Toxic turns. Vaporeon, again, if it's, if it's forced to go to, for Heal Bell a lot of times, save with Umbreon. The cool thing about Umbreon and Toxic Spikes is that Umbreon Synchronized does not activate on Toxic Spikes as opposed to just being Toxic. So it's a nice, safe way to get off that status on it without uh, getting any drawback on our own team. And then, of course, Magneton's immune to Toxic Spikes, but uh, Mega Sceptile, if we need to Toxic that, we can. Um, so, yeah, that is Greninja. Our boy Danza is making a return from week one. Um, as you see there, we are carrying Black Sludge and Infiltrator, pretty standard. Uh, Brave Bird, Taunt, Toxic, and Roost are our moves. Now, Brave Bird is pretty much the best offensive move we need. It really hits a lot of Balfrey's team pretty hard. Plus, it actually Oko's Mega Sceptile, so we do have a backup. Oh. We do have a backup check to that. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, taunt and Toxic work really well because we can uh, Toxic some of these bulkier things like our uh, like the Umbreon. Being a poison type, we don't get synchronized poison back. Uh, we can also stop either Umbreon or Vaporeon for going from the, for the uh, Heal Bell or the Wish and just kind of stop its uh, bulk that way. Uh, taunt is nice because... Like I said, along with stopping the Heal Bell slash Wish on the Evolutions, we also could stop things like uh, Defog Tokus, um, Toxic Arcanine, uh, even like Howl Arcanine, that'd be weird. But mainly, um, Balfrey loves Curse Lax. So this is our, one of our best ways to beat Curse Lax. Granted, the Body Slam pair is always going to be a threat and something we have to worry about. But if we can, ta if we can taunt uh, Snorlax, stop it from going for Rest or uh, Curse, and then Toxic it and wear it down, um, that'll be an effective way to get rid of it. So very nice um, matchup with Taunt on, against Balfrey's team. Now, coming back again with Santa Christ, you know we brought Danza, so we got to bring his boy Santa Christ, and we have a self as Tangrowth returning from week one on Alyssa where it got three kills. Um, it's been a while, but this thing matches up very well against Balfrey's team as well. Uh, EVs-wise, I'll go over those first just to say a little bit about it. Uh, max HP, 136 defense, and one. 20 in spit death uh just natural bulk basically um it doesn't really do anything specific i will let you guys know before the battle of course if our ev spread changed uh in case i want to specialize it anyway but this just seemed like a good bulk on both sides kind of deal uh our moves giga drain sludge bomb earthquake and knock off we look at his team uh we can knock off snorlax recovery nice um arcanine and if it's not if Arcanine is not intimidating and tries to switch in, uh, it will take a lot for, if it's like an offensive variant, and it will take a lot from Earthquake. Um, obviously, we won't stay in on that because the Flare Blitz is uh, not very helpful for Arcanine's long, not, of course it's helpful for, well, I guess technically it's not helpful for uh, Arcanine's longevity, but it's definitely not something that we want to take with our Tangrowth. Uh, Togekiss gets hit by Sludge Bomb. Uh, it should do a lot, especially if it's not a bulky variant. Uh, Mammoth Swine, uh, we can knock off 
We can uh, Giga Drain. Giga Drain does a ton to this. Um, we can knock off Heracross's item potentially, as well as hit with Slug Bomb. Again, we have to be worried about the poison, but we should be pretty safe on there. Uh, we can actually just 2 ko any variant of Slowbro with a Giga Drain. Uh, Sludge Bomb for the Gardevoir, Giga Drain for Vaporeon, uh, plus we can go for like knockoff on this. Umbreon, we can knock off its recovery. Magneton gets 2 ko by uh, Earthquake, and then like uh, Sludge Bomb is our best way to hit Mega Sceptile, which can't really do anything to us, period, number one, because it doesn't really have any moves I can hit. Uh, Tangrowth pretty well, and we're also a Soul Vest, so we can eat up any hit it wants to go for. Um, yeah, so that is Santa Christ. Um, we are bringing Lemon Party back for the third straight game. Now, Azumarill is a very good Pokemon. We are bringing a different set this week. And it's one I wanted to bring a while ago, but the Assault Vest uh, variant just matched up very well in that previous game. Um, this is actually Citrus Belly Drum variant, and this is one of our main sweepers for this week. And the reason for that is, if you look at Balfrey's team, look at our moveset. Our moveset we have is Belly Drum, of course, Aqua Jet, Player of Knockoff. Now let's look at Aqua Jet, Player of Knockoff against Balfrey's team. Snorlax gets o code by plus six knockoff. Uh, Arcanine, even to Intimidate, it has to intimidate us a lot, and he can't keep switching around, especially with our Toxic Spikes. Um, we click plus five, plus six, doesn't matter. Um, Aqua Jet, we knock out Arcanine. Uh, Togekiss really doesn't appreciate Aqua Jet, and if... It tries to switch in. We could always switch into a play rough and die. Um, Mamoswine gets knocked out by a plus six Aqua Jet. Heracross dies to Aqua Jet. Uh, Slowbro, we outspeed that, so we can just knock it out with a plus six uh, knockoff. Plus, unless he scalds burn us, scald burns or T waves us, we can definitely just go for the uh, go for the Belly Drum versus this, and then we can knock out the Gardevoir with the Aqua Jet. Uh, Umbreon and Vaporeon actually share the same speed, so that is what our speed investment is for. We out we speed creep these pretty nicely, and we can knock them both out with Play Rough as long as we hit. Uh, Magneton at plus six is not taking an Aqua Jet. Uh, Sceptile, like I said, is the only thing we have to play around, but as I mentioned, we had th several threats for that. So once Sceptile goes down, Aqua Jet, uh, Belly Drum, Aqua Jet, Azumarill becomes a huge problem for Balfrey. So hopefully we can get that to work in our favor. Uh, last Pokemon we bring is Rambo. Uh, now this is a different set than we would normally bring. It looks offensive, but it's a very different kind of offensive set. We are running Adamant Max Attack to hit as hard as possible. 240 just to outspeed his fastest Pokemon that we can hit with while still keep our Adam in nature, which is actually a Jolly Heracross. Jolly Heracross reaches 295, we reach 296. So we have that. Substitute V Create, Bolt Strike, and Power Up Punch. Now, if you look at this, we sub out a lot of his things. We sub out Arcanine pretty easily, especially if he wants to toxic us. Um, if he wants to be like Toxic or Thunder Wave Slowbro, we can set up on that. We can also just power a punch because Slumber Scald may not even be able to break our sub. And even if it can, um, we could potentially get a plus two on that and then knock it out with Bull Strike. But anyway, um, power punches, um, we can potentially get to plus three on this, depending on its set. Um, especially if it's like rest, uh, that would be pretty good. Um, but yeah, we can power punch on this and then we can knock it out with a plus. I believe we need plus three if it's thick fat. If it's not for some reason, we only need plus one, actually. So V-Create does a lot to this. Uh, Bolt Strike at plus three can knock this out. And then uh, Togekiss gets knocked out by Bolt Strike at plus one, I believe. Maybe plus two, but definitely plus one. Mamoswine, regardless of thick fat, actually just dies to plus two. Heracross dies to neutral um, V-Create. Slowbro, like I said, plus two. Bolt Strike definitely knocks us out. Um, plus one or even actually plus plus one if it's not defensive if it is plus two uh gardevoir just dies to v create uh vaporeon dies to plus two plus two bolt strike uh plus one v create possibly plus uh possibly neutral if it's uh, not very physically invested um magneton dies to v create and then septile regardless if we have any boosts or not actually just straight up dies to v create so if he wants to switch into his dragon Trying to take the fire move, he'll actually just straight up die. So that is the matchup versus Balfrey. Did I mention anything? Oh, yeah. The speed was to get the hair across, and yeah. So I don't think I mentioned the specifics of the uh, Azumarill set, but basically 124 gives an even HP, guaranteeing that we get off our Belly Drum and we get our Citrus Berry activated, maximum attack, and then 128 speed creep the EVs. So that is that, and hopefully you guys enjoyed, and I am staff.